almost everything we do relies on light. After all, without light, we'd be in total darkness. So, how do you go about teaching this? We've come to Codicote Primary School to follow Helen Ackerman, an NQT. She's introduced the concept that we need light to see to her Year 1 class. The lesson included a number of activities. A large cave and shoebox investigations, light box, story box and light source challenges. All these linked with the class literacy focus on a story about a bear. Helen had previously discussed her lesson plan ideas with Jane Turner from the Science Learning Centre, who also provided her with extra resources. They've viewed the tape of the lesson, now they're looking back to review what went on. You had a lot going on in this lesson, a lot of activities. Has that taken you an awful lot of planning and preparation? Yeah, it has. And I don't find um, science in general the easiest subject to plan for. So explain to me why you use story as your introduction to this lesson. Um, I, th I think we need to be as creative as we can in our teaching. Um, I think that inspires children's learning, really. Um, and, and a lot of that has been knocked out of teaching. So, yeah. so it's a big government push to pull that back in. But I'm very comfortable using stories with, with all sorts of teaching. Um, and I think this one lends itself beautifully to the science aspect that I was looking at. Yeah, it certainly set the scientific ideas in a, in a context that they understood and knew about. Mm. Put up your hand if you can tell me what happened in that story, Polly. Um, little bear scared of the dark. That's absolutely right. He was really frightened, wasn't he? You have to be just a little bit careful um, at the end of that particular book because they do go outside into the dark and the moon is there. Yeah. Um, and obviously the moon is not a light source. I didn't want to get into that because that's another very complicated yeah. thing yeah. for them to understand mm. as far as they're concerned. There is more light when the moon is which there. there. Which there which is. Which there is, so... That's, yeah, and, that, and they will come on and do that at Key Stage 2. Absolutely. But that's what they're building Yeah, exactly. From. What I really liked was you'd done the story, you'd got the context set. Then, here, you say, here's my torch, here's my beam of light, focus, this is the science. Let's hope it works. Let's hope the batteries are in. Yeah. Oh, yes, it does work. Oh, look, right. I'm shining it on Samuel's tummy here. <laughs> Samuel, can you feel that on your tummy? No. You can't feel it? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Because it, it doesn't reach far. But it's touching you. I can see it. Look. It's touching <laughs> you. And that was good because you to made him you think. Him. He, he knew it was there. And how did he know it was there? And he had to actually think, can I feel it? Mm. Can, I, can I touch it? And where one of them said, no, you can't pick it up. And one of them said it was flat, didn't they? That, who's yeah. that? Says, it's flat. Can you get it? Why not? It's flat. Because it's flat, you think, because it's, it's flat? it's just air. Is it just air? Yeah. How do we know that light is coming out of here? We said we couldn't touch it, could you we? You can see it. Too. But you could see it with your eyes. And you looked so carefully. And then Felix brought it round at the end, didn't yeah. he, to say, well, you need your eyes yeah. to be able to you see You can the just light. see it, which was great. Mm. You identify particular words, put them up on the board. Any particular reason why you chose those words? Well, I chose the words because I, I'm, they're key scientific mm. words, really, that I want the children to become familiar with while, yeah. while they're with me in year one. And, and because we were doing investigative work, mm. so, of course, investigation is a lovely big chunky word. Yeah. They love it. What's that special word that we use when we're going to be finding out about things? Light source. Light sources are what we're going to be using today. Well done to find out about the light and the dark. But what's that special word that we use when we're going off to find things out in science? Brianna? Um, transparent. Good try, very close. Well, that's what happens, isn't it? You ask for a scientific word and they give you any one they can think of. Yeah. But, but the thing is, if, if, if you look there, you, you can see them all desperately yeah. thinking and, and coming up with excellent other scientific yeah. vocabulary. And around the right theme, yeah. you know, transparent to do with light, that, yeah. that they're on yes. the right lines. It's and thinking back to, to previous learning as yeah, well on the sorting exactly. materials. What do we call it when we're thinking about what might happen, Laura? Guess. Um, estimate. A guess or an estimate. Oh, I'll show you the word. Yeah. See if you can read it. Go on, Laura. Predict. Predict. Oh. Excellent. And, of course, we needed prediction. Um, the children related that one a little, little bit to the yeah. maths, didn't they? Got a little bit confused there with um, estimating, mm -hmm. but that's fine. Um, the fact that we were doing a test, I think that's a particularly difficult concept yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, it's very abstract yeah. at this stage. But a good way but, with this sometimes is to... You need an analogy. Like, if, we, if you said to them, who's the fastest runner in the class? Yes. They could say, yeah. oh, it's... 
William, Peter, somebody. Yeah. They'll, how can we find out? Well, we'll give them a test, we'll make them run. Mm. And then we'll know. Yes. Now that, that they yeah. can understand that, that's because way, that's yeah. very concrete. What we're going to do here is similar. So, yes. We're doing a test and we need to find out the answer. And then what they really struggled with um, was, was the results. Yes. Which they struggle with up to year six, up to mm. year you know, 11. Actually, coming up with your conclusion and explaining it is the, yeah. is the hardest thing. Mm. So we're going to do an investigation. We're going to be predicting, saying what we think will happen. We're going to be testing that doing the activity and finding out, and then we're going to be telling our results. You might be I try very much to, to base it in child-friendly yeah. language um, and then keep bringing back, coming mm. back to that word again. Um, and I'm sure for some of the children, they did grasp it. OK, so talk me through the cave activity, how you planned it out and what happened and what you've learnt from it, really. <laughs> uh, we started with the prediction. Um, the children looking at the different people, choosing which ones they thought they wouldn't be able to see when they took them into the dark place. Um, and they had two sides on the recording sheet here. Um, and we found, we found it best that, that they put the people in the places where mm. they thought that the ones that they would be able to see and the ones that they wouldn't be able to see. In the dark, and which ones? Do you? This one here? You'll be able to see him in and the, the white dark. one. In the dark. Why do you think you'll be able to see him in the dark? Because um, com film is really um, com film is really really shiny in the dark. Do you mean foil? Yeah. Foil is really shiny. Right. Okay. Where do you want to put that then? Right. You're predicting that this one will be one we can see in the dark. There's that kinesthetic approach. I've actually put it there. I hopefully will remember. And it, yes. and it was quite meaningful. Yeah. And I thought the answers were interesting. They were predicting based upon knowledge. They yes. know that white things show up best yep. when you shine a light on them because they've seen it happen in the road. They know that we put the shiny things reflect the light well. So they sort of know that mm. intuitively, but we were trying to make explicit. And what we're trying to do is say, will it work in the dark? Yes, and that was what was difficult for yeah. them, wasn't it? Yeah, you, you want a dark space that isn't threatening and scary, but it is dark mm. because otherwise... All of the best science is undone. Um, yeah. And certainly once they'd got the torches in there, they were able to find the people better, weren't they? How is it now, finding the people in the dark? A bit easier. easier. I, I can, can see the yellow one on my Black. Black. And the red. Okay. And that's what we wanted them to get out yeah. of this. Light enables us to see, which is what they did get. The water, I think. You had the activity where the children were testing to find which was the strongest torch or beam of light, light source not convinced that the children that actually took the children on i think they took themselves on but in terms of what the children did was fantastic well i think the strongest one can it go through my sweater can it go through, you know yeah. look at him here through the chair leg through the back of the thing and recognizing like here if you actually put the surface on it yes it makes different than if the beam's a little bit away yes this Who's this here saying, line it with black? If you cut it through the black paper, it won't Oh, that was through. Peter, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, fantastically yeah. Mm. explained. Yeah. Can you see it through the back of the box, Peter? Shall we try it with the thing? Yeah, but if you put it through pe um, black paper... Why behind the box with that? No. No, no but no. if you didn't have black paper, it would work. Do you think Your children got very the clearly... the. The idea that some things block the light yes. and some things yeah. let the light go through. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Mrs. Palm was a bit slow. Though. You had your teaching assistant in the room with you. Is that always the situation when you're teaching science? Yes, I've, I have a full time teaching assistant in year one. She led one activity, that's the way you'd normally use her, that she's with a, a particular group. It, it would vary really, mm -hmm. depending what we wanted to do. I thought on this occasion this would be quite um, an activity that would require a little yeah. bit of adult focus. Yeah, I wish it did. Um, mm. And Mrs. Palmer's um, supporting their learning here and they're having a lovely time. Yeah, it's a lovely to, activity. Trying to work out what's in the shoeboxes. Yeah. The holes are not big enough, so if we made them bigger, what would it do? Make more light go in. I think you're right, Samuel. I think that's a jolly good idea. Sorry? You can see a big bear! I, th I think that was quite hard for the children to actually look in there and be uh, and, and to release the right, the right amount of yeah. light for them to be able to mm. see what they were looking for. I, th I think the level of intrigue was nice for them. Yeah. I would do it again. It's, it's a really nice activity. It's, a, it's also it's quite a difficult one as well because do you take the lid off, do you look through the holes, putting the torch in, there's quite a lot to manage there. If you take I noticed you got a really fantastic resource in there, that light box that you had on the table. You set them a challenge, which I think is a really good way of getting children focused on a science idea because mm. it sort of is intriguing and motivating and they, they
they were unstoppable, really. Um, I think that's a good way to yeah. describe this hive of activity. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's interesting as well because it looks like they're actually not talking to each other very much, but they are com they are communicating. Yes, and there's very much uh, group interaction going yeah. on here, isn't there? I'm delighted that you're responding to national initiatives to continue that play-based learning through Key Stage 1. Yeah, I think transition is a key issue at the moment for, for Year 1 teachers and we need to be working with our reception teachers to ensure continuity of good practice as the children move through the Key Stage. And I think in the plenary here, um, where, where we've got the, the children trying to record where the people go, that was a little bit confusing for them, wasn't it? I think the, it's sort of the problem of a plenary, really. They're, they're very young. It mm. should happen straight away. It's yes. not a long-term yeah. process, this. We're talking about a short-term thought process that they can understand yeah. from start to finish. So that we can put something something down. Is there, is there well, I'm a way not, you, you know, could suggest? Uh, I, would, I would move away from this need to always have something put down or for the child to put it down. There's lots and lots of ways. It, you can gather evidence for children's attainment in science without it having to be them writing. Mm. I mean, that one, you heard them. Yes. They told their classmates. So there's evidence. You jot it down in a post it and record it, put yeah. it in your records. Did you see this one? In... Yes. Yes. Very, very well. Yes. With the light on? Yes. Right. So where does it need to go now then? On that side. Excellent. Well done. What, back in the dark? No. You needed a light to see it, didn't you? Excellent, well done. What about this one? Yeah, I think you've got to look at your children. You've got you to have. look at your you've cohort got to of know children. Them. And, and yeah. if, if, if your children need to record yeah. in that way, then that you've got to, got it's, to, it's got to be appropriate for it's them, fine, isn't it? Yeah. And also, you know, so many children get turned off science really, really young mm. because it becomes another writing lesson. You've yeah. got some fantastic thinkers in that class. We mm. heard them thinking out loud. Yeah. Excellent, Libby, well done. You can see just a little bit. But a light source helped to see it really clearly. In the middle. In the middle. That was a starting lesson, really. You were you were introducing the concept of light. Used your story. You, you started the children off with lots of exploratory activities. Where will you go next with that? We probably um, need to look at different light sources um, and get some further experience with those. Really, mirrors were there, but not really taken any further. So that would no, be that would be way something we would forward. we would move on to. Yeah as well. Okay Helen, so tell me, what was, what was your low point in that lesson? I, I think I was really disappointed with the cave activity. I, I, I thought that was going to be something um, th that would be easier to manage. I would say that was the high point because that's where I heard a child say, oh, that's not what I expected. I couldn't see a thing. I need the torch to help. So in terms of a science objective made clear, a bit of science investigation turning understanding over, yeah. that was there, explicit. I, I can't see anything. Doesn't matter which silver, white, I can't see a thing until I've got some light. Would you do it again? Yes. Good. I would do. <laughs> but I might even go into the cave with them next time as well. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Quite good fun. So what was your high point there? My high point, I think, was just looking around and seeing the creativity that the children, the children could come up with their own ideas, the fact that they were investigating and exploring and in a most imaginative way. I, I just, I think they had a great time yeah, and did. I think they learnt a lot and they certainly came out knowing what we wanted them to know. Good. Why can't you see them? Because it's too dark. Right.